And so, it begins. Dark were the skies and chill was the wind as the land was covered in a veil of malice. Across the hill did ride the dread army of the night. Cloaked in mist and fog, prepared to rain down death and destruction upon the land. And the people did crowd for a saviour, a noble soul to save them from their impending demise. Just as it seemed all was lost, in strode a mighty hero, clad in shimmering metal from head to toe. Wielding a terrible broadsword, he did cleave his foes in two, smashing their ranks asunder with righteous fury. And when the day was done and the enemy strode across the fields in pieces, the people did turn to the warrior and say, We shall name this day in your honor. Speak unto us your wisdom. The warrior said one word that day. Epic. One man, one murloc, one giant angry badger. This is Blue Please. It begins now. Yes, and you folks, welcome, welcome, welcome to Blue Please here on Wow Radio with myself, Total Biscuit. The date today is the 23rd of January 2009. It is 8 p.m. in my country, my small island in its incredibly terrible recession. With the currency crashing day by day, minute by minute, everything going horribly wrong. And in other places in the world, it is other times. My name is Total Biscuit, and this is Blue Please. Yes, it is. What have we got coming up for you in the show today? We have many, many things. You'll find many things here. And those things will most assuredly not be pleasant. Yes, I'm on the negativity spree. And it's going to stay that way until things get fixed. I have to be, it has to be said we had a new patch this week. And it seems to be they've broken more things than they're fixed. So I can't see myself getting all celebratory or all complimentary or... You know, even remotely animated on the positive side of things. At any rate, I'll certainly get animated on the negative, that I can tell you. So yeah, we'll be talking about when is nostalgia actually nostalgia? And when is nostalgia not nostalgia? Or, why Heroic Molten Core is the worst idea anyone has ever come up with. Also, gold selling ads on the forums. <sighs> Blizzard are selling out their player base regardless of whether or not it was actually intentional, and I'll explain that a little bit later on in the show. Also, the fallacy of being all things to all men, and why dumbing down will actually kill your core base and kill your game. Also, as we are pretty much used to by now, we've managed to dodge the glass so far. Hopefully that will continue, because quite frankly I don't want health and safety on me. It's the of choice! Uh, that was a close one. Yes, the illusion of choice. Get to email in for the last 15 minutes of the show. Email your topics to the at gmail.com. That is the mail at gmail.com. I will ignore the vast majority of them and choose one that is not entirely terrible to fill in the last 15 minutes of the show. Oh, yeah, and also we'll be having some fantastic music coming up later on. Now, first thing is first. I wanted to bring back something I haven't really done in a while. So I, I'm going to do it right now. Uh, <laughs> That sounds like it's mail time. Here's the mail. Oh, it never fails. Oh, it makes me want to oh, wag my oh, tail. When it comes, I want to wail. Yes, indeed. It's time for some mail because this would probably be the first time in, like, I don't know, three months that I've got enough good mail to bother reading. <laughs> so I've got to go for it. Right. I'm going to do the next 15 minutes. We're going to be covering what I've been sent in the mail for the past few weeks. So here we go. I've got an email here from Jason Champion, which is... If that's your real name, then that's like a superhero name. That's stellar. I want to be called Jason Champion. That would be amazing. I, I could wander around with a shield and a giant sword and say, Verily, for I will defeat the evil. I am Jason Champion, an inexplicably German. Anyway. Hi, this is Mixand, which is... But look, right, you've got a cool name like Jason Champion, and you have a handle, a pseudonym, like Mixand? Really? 
Mick Sand? Mixing Sand? I don't know. You've got a name like Jason Champion. What are you doing? Uh, anyway, hey, this is Mick Sand, and I'm wondering what you thought about using private servers for practicing raiding before you try your hand at real raids. I used a private server before I bought WoW, so I didn't have to wait time playing... What? What? What is that? But <laughs> It's just one of those people who can't really write English particularly well. So I didn't have to wait, you know, play, wait for time paying just to learn the game. Of course, you don't get the fun of getting some epic loot because you get it all the time, but I learned a lot from it, and I would rather noobs at raiding learn from a private server instead of just going into a pug or something and taking the aggro when everyone else is about to finish a boss. Kindly regards, Mixan. Yeah, to be quite honest, you really don't need it anymore. I can semi-understand, but you got to bear this in mind. Practice makes perfect, and practice is kind of half the fun. Learning an encounter with your friends on a real server where there are consequences to losing, i.e. the expenditure of time and money, that's a big deal. You know, that makes you learn way better. Way better than it ever would on a private server. You know, we'll ignore the fact that private servers are usually not configured correctly, so all manner of abilities don't work, or your characters are overpowered, or whatever. But doing it on a real server gives you an extra bit of motivation. You know? It's like doing it in a simulator versus doing it in real life. It's not like you're flying a plane or anything. You're not going to kill everyone on board. It's worth doing it in real life if you can. And it's worth doing it on real servers if you can. I think you learn more that way, to be quite honest with you. And considering the quality of the raid content right now, I can't see why anyone would ever need anything like that. It's, it wouldn't help. I mean, you've got to bear in mind that most of the player base is incredibly stupid. Unfortunately, that's just the way of it. That's why the game's been dumbed down to the level that it has. The player base is just not particularly smart. So, it doesn't matter if private servers are available. They're still going to suck. They suck because they suck. Not because they haven't got enough practice. Not even because they lack skill. Just because they just lack either the intelligence or the necessary drive to put the proper amount of effort into the game and realize that, hey, effort and time equals reward and not standing in the fire is a good idea. You can't make that go away by putting them in a simulator. They're still going to be stupid. You know, it's like the difference between artificial stupidity and real stupidity. You can't generate artificial intelligence for these people. They're going to be stupid regardless until they change their attitude. And a private server's not going to make that happen. Okay, we've got another email here from Chris Lee. It's Graham Tash from Cargath US, and he says this, Hey TB, I just listened to your last podcast, where you mentioned it being possible to do next with a raid composed of just Hunters and Pallies, and you mentioned Resuvius as an exception. It actually isn't. At least one guild has killed Resuvius with three Hunters, using a distracting shot rotation to keep him moving and not hit anyone. So yes, Nax should be clearable with that makeup. On a side note, I was inspired by your notion of clearing content with 25 Druids, and I'm considering sending up a guild called Druid Trainer for the express purpose of clearing all Wrath of Lich King content when nothing but 25 Druids. Though we might want to bring in a couple of priest alts for the aforementioned Resuvius fight. Yeah, I mean, it, it just shows the folly of bring the player, not the class. The problem is that since the original version of the game, classes have been more and more homogenized instead of diversified. You'd expect them to be diversified, right? I mean, you add more talent points, you expand their abilities, you expect them to be pushed you know, either one way or the other, but not pushed closer together. No, that, that wasn't exactly what I had in mind. I don't know whether or not that's what Blizzard has in mind, but that's what ended up happening. So yeah, it's sad that you, know, you could even consider doing that, because it wouldn't have worked in some of the more challenging older world rate content. No, not a chance. Where you needed specific class abilities. I, I don't see the harm in that. I don't see the harm in having to have a particular class at all. I don't think the game's AI or the scripting or the way that bosses are set up can ever be set up remotely hard enough where it could be a challenge no matter what kind of group you take. I just don't think that can happen. They haven't demonstrated the ability to do that. Most of the difficulty in bosses is based around certain classes doing certain things at the right time. And removing that certain class element just makes the encounter entirely too easy. Now, got another email here from Drekal Tanlis, and it's far too long. <laughs> so I'm absolutely not going to read it. Don't send emails that, like, this is, like, eight paragraphs. This is not going to get read out on air. There's not even a chance of that happening. So, yeah. Anyway, I had an email here from Christian Sondrup Sorensen, which is the most bizarre name I've seen in a while. And it says this. He was talking about Nax being too easy, and apparently there was 
a movie of lower Theb 25 men killed by only two people, i.e. Rep Paladin and the Warrior. Uh, the thing is, I, Lower Theb was, is just a badly designed encounter period, at least the new version of it is. That's the problem with it. It's not that the whole thing's too easy, or, and even though it is. It's, the problem is that the way that they've dumbed down Lower Theb has made him just a trivial fight in every respect. It's not even an interesting fight, it's just boring. I mean, it's really dull. I think more so than anything, I have a problem that it's dull as opposed to it being easy. Now, this is an email, but I've got this useful feature on my email called Google Alerts. And what Google Alerts can do, which is very handy when you're trying to run a big website and you're looking for, you know, opportunities to expand, market, promote, that kind of thing. Or just look and see who's talking about you, where and why. You can set up Google Alerts and every day it'll email you a list of new finds that include the search terms that you've got. So we have got, like, Wow Radio in there. Yeah, and I've got Toll Biscuit in there. So I can look for feedback on Blue Please and stuff like that. It's pretty handy because sometimes people don't want to send in their feedback to me. They just rather post it elsewhere. And you can generally get something that's a little bit more raw. It's, you know, it's a little bit more honest. And it's, it's really good for actually learning from your mistakes when people don't pull their punches because you think you don't see what they have to say. Well, there's actually a blog here called Hudson's Hideout. Now, I must say I was reading through this blog and I'm actually quite impressed as regards to how well it's written. It is pretty well done. It's not a badly written blog at all. I think the content's good, and you know he is not afraid to write verbatim, which is always a good thing. Blogs, from what I've seen, either just don't write enough, or they write way too much and it's just circular. I.e., it's completely pointless to read because he's just said the same thing five times. Now, if you want to go and have a look at this, it's hudshideout.com slash blog. And there was actually an entry that discussed the last Blue Please podcast. And I want to read out a little bit from that and kind of, you know, kind of follow up on what he has to say. And he was saying this. Uh, he noticed that I was in a rather negative mood about the game overall. And that I brought up some points about the watered down state of the game at present. And that it was so bad for me that I started a retro girl called Arcanist Belt. Level 58, by the way. Almost there. I'll be level 60 by tonight. And then we can go do Scholomance. Oh, yeah. There's an example of a good instance. I love that place. Anyway. And it says, the problem with TB is that he has done it already. He's done it all already and claims the content is easy and too boring now. While I do agree that the game has shifted to a casual player easy mode, I don't think that it is so boring that one has to quit at level 80 instead of doing fun things with his or her guild. The thing is that the kind of guilds I join and the kind of guilds that I enjoy being in are raiding guilds. You know, I don't do RP, I don't do silly events or anything like that, and I don't PvP all that often. You know, I'll do it like once a week. So, to me, it's raid or die, and it has been that for a very long time. I've always felt that the raiding content is the meatiest, most enjoyable, and most rewarding content in WoW, at least up until Wrath, anyway. So, if I'm joining a guild, it's generally... The first thing I will look at is how cohesive they are as a raiding unit. You know, that's what I look for. And I have penned a very, very long and detailed and hopefully impressive application that I use in Alter, depending on which guild that I'm going to. So, I mean, I'm with the Black Guard at the moment, and they're a very capable raiding guild, and I'm having quite a lot of fun with them. At least I was, until I just got absolutely bored to hell of the content. You know, I don't want to raid anymore. I've pretty much retired my character till Ulduar. And I'm keeping him out of there. I might do the occasional instance when I have the time, but to be honest, you know, being short of time, I don't want to do content that's boring. You know, I don't mind rescheduling my life around raiding as long as the raiding is interesting and challenging but it's neither you know, so we even actually managed to down you know, after a while i think we've downed it before but it's the first time that i was there we did 25 my malagos which is supposed to be the most challenging fight there of course excluding south and three drakes and it was great up until phase three and then it's just oh the it's the perfect example of bring the player not the class it's even worse this time because it's like Whatever class you are, in Phase 3, you get to be a rogue. Because you know, that's pretty much what it is. Hey, combo points, stuff like that. It's fiddly as well. I mean, anyone using a custom UI, the vehicle menu doesn't work half the time. So I had to, like, click these tiny little buttons and all that kind of thing. Couldn't hotkey anything. It was just, I don't want to play this class. I don't want to play this stupid rogue dragon thing. It's boring. It's dull. No, it really is. I don't want to fight in three-dimensional space on the back of a dragon. It's just gimmicky. It's not fun, it's not challenging, it's just dull. Well, and that's not what I rolled at the end of the day. Anyway, and he was saying that... Uh, I pointed out that we were seeing 10-man and 25-man in this expansion being pugged just one month into release. And we never would have seen that in Molten Core Blackwing Lair SSC days. Yeah. It's true, though. I mean, it really is. We, we didn't see that that early on. It got pugged eventually, but not for a while. 
And I don't feel that 25-man content should be puggable, at least at this stage in the game. Maybe later on, absolutely. And 10-man stuff, yeah. I mean, Kara got pugged, then it certainly wasn't a month into the game, because it was actually pretty hard, but once it got sort of normalized and tuned back to what they intended it to be, so they claim, you got quite a lot of people pugging it. Uh, but you didn't get people pugging Zolomar that much, and if they did, they didn't tend to do very well, unless they were led by Uber Guilds. And you didn't get people pugging Grawl or McTheridan or SSC or TK or anything like that before the 30% nerf. No. So I, I just... I object to that on principle. Now, there is actually one reply I'd like to say. This is actually a reply to his blog comment before I go to the break. And this is just an example. You know, I don't hold anything against this guy. It's just... I, I find it rather hypocritical. It's this guy called Shamutanti. And he says he doesn't lo normally li listen to me. I find him bordering on, I suppose, slightly annoying. Oh, it slightly? Good lord, I'm not doing my job rightly enough. I, I can annoy you. Uh. Are you annoyed yet? Anyway. So yeah. He says that I have a tendency to place my points in too much of a generalized fashion. Well, to be honest, you've got to place them in a generalized fashion because you've got to bear in mind about, you know, who's listening and the kind of point that you're trying to put across in 15 minutes. You're trying to cover a very broad topic in 15 minutes while talking as opposed to typing when you have all the time in the world. You know, it's kind of important to deliver the point there, but I think the issue I have with this comment is he's got a whole bunch of stuff and he's like, uh, then I have an issue with the blogosphere lately, uh, no, becoming a noticeable trend of slamming first and leaving clarity second, lacking reasoning, evidence, and effective reasons beyond. The thing is, like, there aren't, there is no reasoning or evidence in his comment either. It's like, Oh, I do, you know, he's right, he says, um, oh, he's misinformed over a number of issues, Death Knights, and misconstrues concepts about TBC, such as? <laughs> Where? Which ones? I mean, you can't ask for evidence, reasoning, and a proper conclusion when you don't provide any of your own. It doesn't work that way. I'm sorry. And if you do think that the show is meant to inspire some academic style of debate, then no, it's relatively informative entertainment. That's really all it is. You know, if I want to be the shock jock of WoW Radio, then that's what I'll be, because that's what people want me to be. Anyway, you're listening to Blue Please here on WoW Radio with myself, Total Biscuit. I'll be right back after this with our first topic of the day. This is Chewy with Battle Metal!